Hey, 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 hey. Good evening. Hey, how is everybody? Hope you are dwelling in the well of <laughs> he who is with you, he who is greater than, bigger than, mightier than. Whew. Holy Spirit. Come on in, come on in and manifest your desire tonight. Manifest your splendor. We welcome in, we welcome in your kingdom come, your kingdom grow. Let there be light. Let there be strength. Holy Spirit, we surrender everything we are and everything we have to this moment. We bless your purpose. We bless your grace of discernment. We welcome the breath of revelation to teach, to move, to impart, to give us understanding of discernment tonight, Lord. We bless the realm, and we acknowledge the realm of your authority, your kingdom authority. We welcome... <laughs> you to continue to invade the atmospheres invade the atmospheres breath of revelation unveiling 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 who we are as we are according to your design your design in the new the new wine We welcome your breath. We welcome revelation to flow. We welcome your heartbeat. Lord, I bless you in every heart right now. You're already there. I bless you. I bless you. The indwelling beauty and splendor of the King of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. I bless you in them to facilitate discernment, to facilitate the discerning heart like, like Solomon of old. We've always been told he asked for wisdom, but in the original it's actually he asked for a discerning heart to lead the people. Lord, I'm asking right now for a discerning heart to be quickened in your bride, quickened in your body, quickened. If there's ever a time, it's now that we need discernment. Discernment to see, perceive, be aware of. But what to be aware of? Discernment isn't an intellectual ascent. It isn't an intellectual skill. Discernment for me is the Holy Spirit quickening my awareness, my senses, my spiritual senses, our, our spidey senses, as it were, to discern what he wants us to discern. I bless the rolling thunder of the design of the Spirit in you to discern. It's not for the elite. It's not for the special few. It's not for the, the ones that are at the top of, of a mountain, but they're for 
It's, it's the common wealth of the king that you discern. And if you are following Jesus, guess what? You discern because you discerned his voice. We have discerned his voice from all the rubble and the trouble. How did you come to a place of following him? How did you come to a place of following him, of surrendering? Many of us, it was through <laughs> gigantic tribulation and desolation that we came awake, that we need something other than ourselves. We need someone. We need a Savior. What a concept. That's not a, that's not a weak statement. That's a, that's a <laughs> original design statement. The Father of lights, the Father of creation designed us to know Him, designed us to be united with Him, designed us to have that God vacuum. He put something in us that only He can fill. Many follow after everything. We followed after every other thing. We looked for love in all the wrong places, in all the wrong faces, because there's only one face, the face of the Father through the revelation and unveiling of Jesus Christ the Lord, His Son, sent to the earth. If you don't know Him, he knows you. <laughs> Call on his name and he will, boom, appear to you in your heart. He's done it for many of us here. Discernment. How do you discern? What do you discern? And is your discernment so tied into... <clears throat> opinion and debate and legalism and and all the the carnality that's flooding the earth all the carnal kingdom of man is is your discernment entrenched to only see what is the anti god to only see the darkness do is your is your discernment plugged into the everlasting light. And it's a process. It's been a process for me over the decades of learning what it is, learning what it's not, learning what I am, and learning what I'm not. And for me, discernment is a level of awareness in my sense of being deep in me it's not here in the head it's not an intellectual knowledge it's not a knowing from the head but it's a knowing it's a it's an intuitive spirit knowing the father's co-knowing his his breath of knowing isn't always got to be in the earthquake it always isn't in the shaking and the baking out there a lot of times it is the still small knowings and the still small nudges. They that are led by the impulses of the Spirit, these are the sons and daughters of God. So it's, it's, it's vital that we pick apart, we, we differentiate. Let there be a differentiation between authentic discernment Wrapped up in love, discernment and love work together in the Bible. Let's be biblical. Discernment and love, discernment and carnality, scary, Larry. <laughs> discernment wrapped up in, in carnality only sees the problem, only sees the, the giants, only sees the... the the tribulations and the trials and the woes only sees the, the woe is me, I'm undone, but in a bad way, in a sense of poor me, I only see. But discernment plugged into, there's an unplugging got to happen in many of us 
And it's a process, it seems, to unplug from the carnal, our discernment, our senses, and fully plug into, fully plugged into the fullness of love himself. Are we fully plugged into the fullness of love himself, discerning with love? Let love empower you, grace you to discern with love so that we have the voice of thundering love that doesn't accuse with the condemnation. There is now, therefore, no condemnation, not a speck of it. I know I've had encounters where there's absolutely zero condemnation from the Trinity, and trust me, in my head, <laughs> get away from me. I'm a man of unclean, whatever, and it's like, but God stepped in with unconditional, everlasting, eternal acceptance where zero condemnation. Love could have discerned me at my brokenness, me at my desperation, me at my, 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 my need of cleaning, as it were, <laughs> back in the day. But he came and revealed perfected love with discernment of who I am in I am. Discernment with love calls out the treasure and doesn't have a preoccupation and an obsession with the darkness. We don't need to be reminded of what's wrong with us. That comes by default. You don't need to be a prophet or whatever to find out what's wrong with us. But it takes a prophetic spirit with discernment wrapped up and possessed of perfect love, which is the person of God the Father. Perfected love wants to kiss your heart awake to see what he sees. Do you see what I see, says the Father? Do you perceive what I perceive in you, in them, in him? Do we perceive that Father is good and only good? Do we perceive that love is good and only good? Or just a smidgen of something else? Is there, is there a shadow of something in else in this perfected love? Or does love be so secure in themselves, the Trinity, that they, that they don't need to use darkness to convince us of darkness. They use light. They, they empower, they breathe with light to help us see right that we are accepted in the beloved. We, you, are accepted in the beloved. Do you discern in the sense of your intuition, in your sense of self, do you discern that you are accepted in the beloved? Passion translation in the spirit of adoption translates it, translate it as total acceptance. Sonship is total acceptance. Love's total acceptance of you, me, we, because of who Jesus is, because of what Jesus finished, because of what Jesus is finishing in us. He finished it, and now he's finishing you and me and bringing us into alignment of perfected likeness, matured innocence, matured likeness, as my friend Dan says, matured innocence. He's, he's refining and defining us as matured innocence. And matured likeness of him as he is in heaven. So now are you. Do you perceive it? Do you discern that you, we are as he is? Or do we only see the carnality and, and cannot see the now essence of what I am and I am? Or do we, do we have to put it off in the sweet by and by when we die because the shame or the self-condemnation or the self-judging won't let us accept what love says. Can't accept that this gift of life, this gift 
to see, this gift to discern what the Father says is true. Discern, discernment, discernment, discernment. We don't need <laughs> to be professional, problem-seeking believers. There's too many professionals of that. I want to be proficient in the authentic Christ in you, in me. I want to be proficient. I want to be, if there's going to be an expert, I want to be an expert of the authentic because I discern that Christ, I discern that you have the spirit of. Remember those days? I discern that you have a spirit of this. You have a spirit of that. Well, bless God. Father says, I perceive you have the spirit of my son. Now come, let's run. I perceive that you have the spirit of my son, my empowered, emboldened son. I perceive there is the spirit of Jesus somewhere. Can we, can we push away the fig leaves? Can we push away the carnality? Can we push away the lies? Can we push away the shame and see, perceive, and call out the treasure of you and me as he sees? This isn't a, 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 a better program. This isn't a, a, a program of, of feel good. It's be good as your Father says you are good. As he is, so now are we. Do we dare to perceive and discern that he has made us good? Remember those years? It's like he doesn't make any junk. Well, guess what? It's absolutely true. But we had to work through some stuff. I was like, are you sure? Because every time I used to feel stuff, it would always feel like there's something wrong with me. And if I could just find that nugget in my shoe, if I could find that pebble, then maybe I could dare to believe I am as I should be. I dare to believe that he has made me good. But guess what? He took away your enemies. He took away the negative desires. He's taken away. He's taken away the pebble in your shoe, Jesus took it away. Agree with him and sink in and swim. In all things, he's making together for good. Even in the midst of the chaos, even in the midst of the toil, even in the midst of... Can we dare to discern? Can we dare to believe and discern that what he says is actually true, that what he says of you is true, that you have the spirit of the Son, so now let's run. Let's run together in a, in a realm of unification, being unionized. <laughs> Did you know that you were in the union? that you're in the holy union with the Trinity, let's walk in, let's walk as though we are unified, not in doctrine, unified in this or that and on this and not on that and all that. It isn't about sides. He's not here to take sides. He's over to be taken over with the dominion of perfect love, with the dominion of as you should be. Now let's see if we can discern what he says that's way more important with what that says and exalts itself. And, and the giants are out there screaming. The giants are out in their, in, their, in their big systems saying this and saying that, but what say he? What says the living God What's the voice of love saying to humanity in the midst of a flood of crazy? What's the voice of love saying? Come out from among it. Come out from among the delusion. Come out from among trying to figure it all out. And I'm saying that. I'm preaching to myself and you can listen. <laughs> Come out from among this, this Babylonian-like confusion. The Tower of Babel, it means the Tower of Confusion. Hello, anybody been a little bit confused in the last? little while well, guess what I wonder if there's something lurking that's making all this confusion come out from among it and believe again that love 
wants to speak tenderly to the heart. He's brought us out to the wilderness, it says, to speak tenderly. So if we have wilderness kind of thing, it's guess what? Somewhere within, somewhere in our heart, Jesus is whispering sweet nothings, but they're sweet everything because love keeps no record of wrong, but love, he is perfect in every way. He doesn't create evil. He doesn't create but man creates, but we need to step back out of the, the flood, drop into the ark of his presence, and float with him because he's not freaking out. He's not wringing his hands, and he's not thinking he's going to get voted out because guess what? The Father enthroned him forever and is putting the enemies under his feet. This is all biblical. Can't give you chapter and verse, but go look at it. I dare you to, to, to look into the Bible and say, is this stuff true that this crazy Canadian is saying? Yes, I've read enough of it. I've, I've devoured enough of it. And it's changing me. I'm no longer what I used to be. I'm no longer a drug addict that can't add, subtract, multiply. I've been changed. I'm being changed. Something of he who is in me is, is, is flowing through. And he's flowing through with the true new you to be discerning what love is saying not discerning what evil is saying that's easy like i said before you don't need to be a prophet or a prophetic person or a, a person in the know to realize there's some stuff happening there's some crazy stuff happening where is god in the midst of it there's nothing new under the sun there were worse regimes in history the roman empire was the worst they've been said it was the worst that it's ever been in humanity and guess what boom jesus was born in the worst time <laughs> in the worst time but the best of time for a savior to come on the scene and it was announced at his birth to the shepherds that peace goodwill toward man that's the intent of the father peace good will toward man the father's intent to you intention design is to move everything together to manifest well-being peace can be interpreted as total well-being do you discern <laughs> can you believe and discern as he engraces us, as he emboldens us, as he graces us, he empowers us to believe, and then we perceive, boy, God, you're so different than what the world is saying. God, you're so different than what religion is saying. God, you really are so different than what them, the voices out there are saying. Can you discern, or, and this has been, a process even for all of us is can I trust him to detangle my heart to discern things aright to discern things of the light in me not necessarily out there like let's 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 work on let's hit let's let him work on this house and then be concerned about others take the log out of our own eye before we try and take it out of anybody. I want the log completely. I want the mixture out of me. I heard, I heard in my heart one time, it's like when, when my church is without mixture, then I can come, I can appear without measure. Can you imagine what the ecclesia, what the bride of Christ would be in full measure that Jesus would, would appear through the bride in full measure, no limit, no mixture, no... No limitations, no boundaries, no limitations. Could we imagine what a, what a bride of perfected discernment and love could be revealing of, of God's goodness, peace, goodwill toward men? So I think we're becoming very, very evident that, that goodwill and men um, 
is 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 man's ability to produce a path of peace show me it in history show me it in history some people love to research history show me a timeline where there was a realm of peace created by man but Jesus became a man to pull us out of the chaos, to pull us out of the old ways and the old mold of Adam. And he became the last Adam, and he, and he endued humanity with something of himself in victory, something of himself in resurrection, glory, and power, and honor. That's who he is as he is right now. Not one day, right now, the spirit of Jesus is a resurrected, incredibly powerful being, lover of the nations, desire of the nations, lover of our soul. Do we discern him? Can we discern? Because if there's too much static coming from other channels, we got to sometimes push them away, shut them off, and sink in and swim with the frequency of love, frequency of grace, frequency of glory. You know, it's been said that, that the definition or the this, this simplification of definition, but you can't really simplify because it it's huge, glory simplified is view, opinion, reality. So... Christ in you, Christ in me, is the confident expectation of Father's reality is somewhere in you, is somewhere in me. But if, if I'm distracted too much by all the other voices, by all the other earthquakes, by all the other storms of crazy that's going on, can I huh, sink in and hear, perceive, discern, the voice of the good shepherd that wants to lead the sheep into right paths that he's created not right paths of our own working and our own self-improvement and renovations but paths of restoration paths of impartation paths that that uh, some say in, in, in some translations it, it's called a covenant of bliss. Too good to be true. That's God. If it's too good to be true from that realm, guess what? That's the Father's grace. That's the Father's gift of perfect love. Boom, where I am, come and be with me. In the Spirit. In the Spirit. Being not distracted by discerning plugged into the carnal fallen aspect of man's futility of mind but unplugged and 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 centered in and established in the love of god through jesus that laid on the cross that willingly gave himself you don't know him call i was like jesus come on in show me what this crazy Canadian is saying, show me, give me revelation, ignite my heart to see who you are. And it's perceived to the innocent heart. It's not to the high-minded know-it-alls, but to the babes. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, that you didn't reveal these things to the wise, but you revealed them to the babes, meaning the, the innocent, the innocent childlike, not childish, childlike. Dad, if you said it, I'm going to trust you. Dad, if you said this is true, I'm going to trust you. Dad, God, creator, you say this, I'm going to believe it and receive it. Simple. So discern with me. Discernment has got a bad rap it's had a bad rap it's had a it's been neglected discernment has been through the mill a lot of have different definitions of it and to me i'm more jealous to see discerning the voice of love himself versus discerning everything that's wrong in the landscape again i don't think too many people need to prophet be prophetic be revelatory have a whole lot of whatever to discern to say Houston we have a problem 
Houston, we have a problem. Okay, brilliant, Einstein. But what's the voice of love want to speak to his beloved as solutions? Speak to your heart to help you have strategy to get out of the chaos. Have strategy because the still small voice says, go over here, son, go over here. Have you considered going over this way? Have you considered coming out from among that voice, that influence, and come on over here and believe that peace can be an umpire in your heart, that if you don't feel peace, if you don't discern peace, you know, when I say feel, I mean sense, I mean discern. I don't see emotion in that. It's just, I have a sense. You know, my wife is amazing in that. She has a sense of certain things, but she might not have a whole lot of intellectual knowledge about why, but she has a knowing in her knower. And I've learned and learning to pay attention because it isn't women intuition, guys. It's discerning of spirits. It's discernment. It's the gift of discernment in function. It's, it, it does well to give heed to and look for confirmation and say, okay, Father, we're trusting. We can walk in that path. We're trusting you to lead us into the true and the new and the good path of life. Hope this has been a blessing. I feel like I'm rambling. But I bless Holy Spirit to impart what he knows is needed, what he knows might have been missing, to discern with him, to discern what love is saying, not what the enemy is saying, not what darkness is saying. They're yapping. If they're screaming, it's because they're desperate. But guess what? Dad's so secure. The Trinity is so secure in themselves and in what they can bring that they only need to whisper. Think of that. They don't need to shout it. And their shout is a whisper to the innocent that hear, the innocent that can discern, the innocent that can discern. There's a peace. Let's follow this. There's not a peace. Not going near it. Thank you, Abba. I bless your friends. I bless the hungry ones. Let there be life. Let there be might. Let there be sight. I bless the veils to be lifted. I bless whatever's contrary to love to be lifted. Whatever's contrary to love's voice and partnering with discernment, Lord, let there be a melting by your all-consuming love of them and for them, a melting away that would try and distract them from something other than love, something other than peace. You know, some would say peace is so simple. Come on, there's got to be something bigger. There's got to be something more flashy. There's got to be something more sensational. Hello, it's the God of peace that crushes Satan under our feet, Romans 16. So peace is a powerful weapon that you can abide in that refuge. You can abide in the person of the Prince of Peace in our heart. Do you discern him? Do you abide in the words of peace, in the words of love? Lord, quicken what is of you. Let it be manifest. Let it fall on good ground. Let it resonate of kingdom frequency, kingdom sound, awakening the assurance, the assurance that they hear the voice of the good shepherd, that they hear the voice of, that thunders as a whisper because it's got nothing to prove. He proved it 2,000 years ago. The voice that thunders as a whisper. Let love permeate every need, every missing 
piece to the puzzle. Let love release an empowerment of discernment in partnership with love almighty God our Father. In them awaken awaken us where we are asleep to see, discern what you are as you are and what we are united, unionized with love. In Jesus' name, bless you, friends of the living God. Thanks for giving me a little bit of time. Hope I didn't ramble too much, but anyway, bless you guys. Check us out, Lion Sword Solutions. Come on in and um, see past things we've done with worship or whatever, whatever. But um, yeah, thanks for hanging out. And we will see you again when he releases it yet. The website's right there. Jacqueline's put it up. Thanks, love. Check it out. Help us if you can. We'd appreciate whatever you can pour in. Your supply, our supply. We kind of commingle the goodness of the Father because that's who he is. The common good of all things. Love you guys. Bless you guys. And we will chat with you next time. See ya.